Okay, and welcome back to part three of our magical journey on antiderivatives. So, uh, we're going to talk about now, there are some cases where you can actually find a value for C, for a particular case. Usually we put the plus C there, just a reminder, uh, to talk about how this is uh, any constant, right? The antiderivative of something could be you know, x squared plus any constant. Well, there are some cases where you can actually figure out what that is. Uh, and first off, I want to remind you of a couple things. Um, so if I had just asked for, you know, the integral 0 to 2 of, say, f of t dt, this is a definite integral. And when you find a definite integral, that gives you an area. And your answer is going to be a number. When I ask for an indefinite integral, though, an indefinite integral, what we're doing is, is an antiderivative. And there your answer is going to get a function. So if you take the antiderivative of f of x dx, uh, you end up with some function. Okay, so not necessarily a number, but a function. So that's what our answers are going to be. They're going to be functions. So for example, um, suppose here I tell you that f prime of x is equal to 4x cubed, and I tell you that f of 2 equals 8, and I ask you to find f of x. Okay, so notice the new part here. This right here, this f of 2 equals 8, this is what's called an initial condition or an initial value. It's a point. It's saying the point 2 comma 8 is on the graph of f. And that's going to allow us to find c. So let's see. f we know is the antiderivative of f prime. So that means that it's going to be the antiderivative of 4x cubed. Okay. Well, what function has a derivative of 4x cubed? That is x to the fourth plus some constant c. Now, if I have the function f of x equals x to the 4 plus c, what I'm going to do here, the new part is, I'm going to plug in 2 comma 8 to solve for c. Okay, so I'm going to plug that in. So it's saying 8 equals 2 to the 4th plus c. So 8 equals 16 plus c. So that means I have to have a c value of negative 8. So my original function is x to the 4 minus 8. Okay. So that's what we can do. And so if we have this point right here, um, we don't need to actually figure out what the C is going to be. Or we can't actually figure out what the C is going to be. Let's do one or two more. Uh, and then we're going to get something that's a little saucier, I think. So suppose, for example, uh, I tell you that F prime of X equals rad X times 1 plus 2 over X. And I tell you that F of 1 equals 1. And again, we have to find my original function, F of X. Okay. So let's work with this. Uh, my original function is going to be the antiderivative of root x times 1 plus 2 over x, um, also known as, let, let, let's go ahead, when you see something like this, you should distribute out, right? Because we don't know what to do if they're multiplied. So let's distribute that out as rad x plus 2 rad x over x. Now you might be a little flummoxed. What do I do with rad x over x? Well, let's see. That's x to the 1 half over x to the 1. So if I subtract those powers, that's x to the negative 1 half. So this is just going to become the antiderivative of x to the 1 half uh, plus 2x to the negative 1 half. Okay, so uh, let's go from there. So if we add 1 to the powers, uh, my function is going to be x to the 3 halves, put a 2 thirds in front. Here we have a 2. Negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half, and we'll put another 2 in front. Okay, so now my function is equal to 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus 4 square root x plus c. What was the initial condition they gave us? It was 1 comma 1. That worked out nicely. So let's go ahead and plug in 1 comma 1. So 1 equals 2 thirds. Remember, 1 to any power is just 1. right? 1 to the x is always 1. That's convenient. Uh, plus 4 times 1 plus c. So I'm going to get 1 equals 2 thirds plus 4. So that's 14 thirds plus c. So I get a c value there of 1 minus 14 thirds. So that's going to be negative 11 thirds. That well, worked out a little ugly. But that, uh, I mean, that derivative does look correct. So, right, the 1 halves come down. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, okay, so this is going to work out to be uh, my function. I always want to rewrite the function, right? The problem told me to find f, so that's 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus 4 rad x minus 11 thirds. Okay, so that's how we approach these problems, right? We, we do the same thing. We plug in the point, and that lets us solve for c and kind of rewrite the answer in our final form. Now let's go a step further. So let's do one now where we start with the second derivative. 
So because I'm going to have to do two antiderivatives, in this case, I'm going to actually need two initial conditions. Okay, so if I have two initial conditions, um, this is what that'll look like generally. And there will be another case, we'll look at that in class. So f double prime of t equals 6t plus 4. And I tell you two things. I tell you f prime of 0 is negative 6, and I tell you f of 1 equals 9. So those are my two initial conditions. Okay, well, let's break this down into two steps, right? We have f double prime. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find f prime, and then we're going to use that to find f. Okay, so we'll do two antiderivatives. So f prime is the antiderivative of f double prime. So the antiderivative of 6t plus 4 dt. Okay, so that means my f prime is 3t squared, right? That's t squared over 2, those cancel, plus 4t plus c. Now, the important part here is that I plug in the proper initial condition. So I need to plug in the f prime condition, which in this case was 0, comma, negative 6. I'm going to use this one because it deals with f prime. So that's telling me that negative 6 equals 0 plus 0 plus c. Well, that worked out nicely. Um, so that means that my f prime is 3t squared plus 4t minus 6. All right, now let's get to my original function. Now, f is the antiderivative of f prime. So the antiderivative of 3t squared plus 4t minus 6. Okay, so in this case, um, we're going to get, let's see, so that'll be t cubed uh, plus 4t squared over 2, so 2t squared minus 6t plus c. Now, don't get confused by the notation. Um, this is, in fact, a different c. So if that's confusing to you, feel free to use D if you want, or you can use like a C1 and a C2 to kind of keep those straight, but it's not the same, right? This is one C value, this is a second C value. I still need to find this other C value here. Now I'm gonna plug in the F condition. Okay. So what is the F condition that I need to plug in? Well, it was one comma nine. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So I get nine equals one plus two, um, minus 6 plus c. So I get 9 equals negative 3 plus c. So I got a c value there of 12. So finally, I can rewrite my original function like the problem told me to do, t cubed plus 2t squared minus 6t plus 12. Invigorating, right? We got to do this twice. That was delightful. Okay, so that's how you deal with these initial conditions. That's how you find this f. One more thing I wanted to show you, and this is kind of unrelated to this, but useful in general, is how do we find the antiderivative of, say, 6 to the x dx? Well, this comes back to, to derivatives, right? So let's go back to a derivative. If you take the derivative of 6 to the x, hopefully you remember that you get 6 to the x times the natural log of that base. So just multiplied by this constant. Well, what that means is, is that if I, if I take a derivative, I'm going to multiply by ln of 6. So if I take the antiderivative, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to divide by ln 6. Okay. And hopefully this kind of makes sense. Because if you go ahead and like check your answer on this, um, if you check and take the derivative, the derivative of 60x ln 6, and 60x ln 6 over ln 6, those cancel. Great. So that works out. Um, in terms of like a more general form, if you integrate uh, 6 to the, or let's, let's not say 6, let's say you integrate a to the x dx, where a is some constant, just like how the derivative of a to the x was a to the x times ln a, uh, here it is a to the x divided by the natural log of that base plus c. Okay, so that's the general rule. We'll see those every once in a while. All right, well, hope this helped. Enjoy your initial values, and I look forward to seeing you all in class. Thanks for watching.